Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. Today, we're taking a look at the new Marvel Legends Controller Wave Iron Man, designed by Alex Ross. Starting off with the packaging, and we have a wonderful Marvel Legends window box. For now, Iron Man logo down here, Iron Man logo up here, barcode for those who want it, and a really cool piece of artwork on the back. Tony Stark resolves to get back to basics, donning a new stripped-down Iron Man armor inspired by his most classic designs. The build-a-figure for this wave is Controller, who has a lot of smart reuse from Thanos. Other figures in the wave include Thor, Blue Marvel, Madam Hydra, Speedball, Quake, and U.S. Agent. One interesting observation is that while it does have the Iron Man logo, it doesn't actually say which Iron Man it is underneath. Up to this point, that's pretty much been the norm. Because of that, you might not know that in the comics, this is referred to as the Model 70. I love these window boxes, and knowing that they're going away makes me appreciate them all the more. For packaging, this round goes to... what? <laughs> Sorry, wrong video. For packaging, I'm giving Iron Man one whole point. Moving on to presentation, an Iron Man stands at six and a half inches. As I read on the back of the box, Alex Ross, but I mean Tony Stark, designed this to feel like a bunch of different classic looks blended together. Obviously, we start with this one as a base. Even at a glance, we can tell that this is a more techie, practical version of this. The gloves are near identical, as are the boots. The belt buckle and underpants area are very similar too. The unibeam and other lights are the same. That said, the helmet reminds me a bit more of this one. For one thing, you have more defined points at the top. For another, you have panel lines going all the way up the scalp. The other version doesn't have that. Instead of the side discs, he has these big white lights. That honestly reminds me of the Bleeding Edge armor. Also, his collar is a bit more built up, which kind of reminds me of the Silver Centurion. Additionally, anywhere where there would have been muscles have panel lines. This, of course, reminds me of the Extremis armor or the movie armor or also the Prime armor. Same with all the paneling on the back. As far as the figure itself goes, it's been cast in a marbleized plastic. The red honestly isn't quite quite as marbleized as usual, and the gold is a lot more yellow, at least as compared to other figures. One thing that kind of bums me out is that there's a tiny scratch on the unibeam. Luckily, the other lights are nice and crisp. The only problem is the most important one. The extra thigh armor makes him look thick with two C's. I'm also a bit distracted by the fact that the inner joint is gold instead of red. Same on the back, but not as big of a deal there. While we're down here, I do really like these boots, and there's some great detailing on the bottom. When it comes to Iron Man armors, this will always be my favorite favorite. Even so, I can't deny that as a more realistic, high-tech upgrade, this design is pretty cool. To be honest, it feels like a more natural progression than some of the other armors he's had. Although I do have a few minor quibbles, overall, Hasbro has done a great job of translating this into action figure form. For presentation, I'm giving this Iron Man one whole point. Moving on to poseability, and there's some nice engineering here. Tony has a ball joint and a disc hinge at the base of his skull, and a ball joint at the base of his neck. Using both, and he can look up this far, which for a flying character is fantastic, and he can look down this far. The extra joints, of course, give him an incredible amount of tilt, and of course, all the way around. Iron Man's shoulders have detents that click into place, and they can raise this far. Just be warned that it does bend the shoulder pauldron out of place. The shoulders are also kind of stiff, but the bicep swivel is kind of loose. There's been a couple of times now that I've been afraid that this was going to pop off. Moving down the arm, though, and he does have pinless double-jointed elbows. The range isn't that great because of the cuff of the gauntlet, but if you notice, they do have a little bit of a dip in the bicep so that it can cut in as much as possible. And then moving all the way down the arm and his wrists can swivel and hinge. Shifting to the torso and tone he has a diaphragm joint. He can arch back this far and hunch over not much at all. To be honest, I'm really not a fan of these. That said, I do appreciate their ability to tilt and twist, utilizing both his neck and diaphragm joint, and he can get into a great flying pose. Below the waist, an Iron Man has ball jointed hips. They can kick out this far and split this far. Traveling down the leg, and he does have a thigh cut nicely hidden by this thigh armor, pinless, double jointed knees, boot cut, and ankles that can hinge and pivot. Despite some of the limitations of the diaphragm joint, this Iron Man is every bit as articulated as you would want him to be. In some ways, the diaphragm adds range that we otherwise wouldn't have gotten. I do wish that there was a bit more range in the shoulders, and I am a bit worried about the pauldrons getting warped over the long haul, but for posability, I'm giving the Model 70 
poll point. Before we continue, if you like this video, do me a favor and give it a like. I put a lot of love into my videos and your likes help more people to see them. Moving on to playability, an Iron Man comes preloaded with these blast hands. That's to accommodate these blast effects. This time they've been cast in a see-through yellow. As always, you can also peg them into his boots. And on that subject, he also comes with these smoke effects. They wrap around the blast effects like so and definitely add a bit of razzle-dazzle. He also comes with a pair of alternate fists. No unmasked Tony Stark can unfortunately, but you can always use one of the other ones that you have lying around. Duh. But playability is more than just accessories, it's also about how well your figure plays with others. Starting with the classic design, and here we have the original Marvel Legends from 2002. Here we have a 2012 version by Hasbro. And then jumping ahead, and here we have the 80 years version, and the 20th anniversary version. Here we have the 1990s undercleavage version, and here we have the movie version Mark III with his tiny little arms. Here we have the Silver Centurion, and here we have the Bleeding Edge armor from Marvel Select. For a blue version, and here we have this Gamerverse armor, but for some more blue ones, and here we have Stealth Iron Man, and Stealth Iron Man, and Stealth Iron Man, and Stealth Iron Man, and Stealth Iron Man. For some Avengers comparisons, and here we have a couple of different versions of Captain America, here we have a couple of different versions of Thor, smaller one Legends and big one Select, and here we have the Hulk. For some West Coast Avengers, and here we have War Machine, White Vision, Wanda Maximoff, Wood Tigra, and Wasp. Spider-Woman. For his fellow Illuminati members, and here we have Doctor Strange, Mr. Fantastic, Professor Xavier, and Namor. Sorry, by the way, I don't have Black Bolt. For a Thunder Thighs comparison, here he is with DC Rebirth Batman. But for the real Tony Stark of the DC Universe, here he is with Lex Luthor. Search your feelings, you know it's true. Interestingly enough, Lex has very similar thigh armor. And light discs. Hmm. For a relative scale comparison, here he is with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And as always, here he is with Stealth Iron Man. Again. The nice thing about Iron Man is that you can never have enough armors. This would make a great standard Iron Man for a new collector, or just another nice addition to your Hall of Armor. The blast effects are always welcomed, and I really like the new smoke trails that have started to become a standard. For playability, I'm giving this Iron Man one whole point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. Iron Man retails for $24.99. In contrast, the 20th anniversary Iron Man was $27, and the only other things it came with were an extra head and a figure stand. Unlike the 20th anniversary, this figure is a 100% new sculpt, so at $2 less, I do feel like it's a better value. For price, I'm giving the Model 70 Iron Man one whole point for a grand total of 5 out of 5. To put some more iron in your diet, check out this video on the Marvel Legends 20th anniversary version, or this one on the Hall of Armors playset. Where does this armor rank for you? Sound off in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.